Mr. Marks, what work were you asked to do in this case? Uh, I was asked to um, uh, bring my uh, years of experience in the entertainment industry uh, and look at uh, the, the damage that the op-ed of 2018 uh, created in Johnny Depp's uh, career and his life and his reputation. What work did you do to determine whether Mr. Depp's reputation had been damaged by the op-ed? Well, again, I, I, I view the op-ed and the fallout through almost 50 years in the business. And what I did was I read the pleadings in the case, the deposition transcripts, the articles, uh, the pleadings, uh, all of the, the um, uh, paperwork in this case, which is voluminous. Based on the analysis you've done and your expertise in the entertainment industry, have you formed any opinions in this case? Yes. Uh, what, generally speaking, what is your opinion? My general opinion is that the uh, op-ed uh, uh, damaged uh, uh, Mr. Depp, created a, a, a cancel situation, if you will, uh, harmed his reputation and his ability to get work in uh, Honor, Hollywood I'm industry. Objection. Yeah. Hold on, sir. Yes. I, I thought, that, I, could we approach? Oh, sure. Mr. Marks, do you have experience working with companies looking to engage actors to market or advertise their products? Yes. And what's that experience? Well, virtually every company I, I work for, uh, they are engaging actors to advertise their products. Most of the time, those products are TV shows or uh, streaming series or feature films that all involve product spin-offs and derivatives, and sometimes they are just uh, uh, products uh, and spokespeople getting together. But yes, I have experience in, in uh, hiring a star to be the face of your product. What types of things do companies consider when they're looking at using actors in their marketing or advertising? Well, as you can imagine, they consider reputation. This is a capitalist uh, society and they're looking to make money. They want to add value to their investment. They want actors who have reputations that will bring eyeballs to the screen, uh, bodies in the seats. They're looking for uh, added value, not negativity. Do you have experience negotiating agreements for actors to play a certain role in a film? Oh, yes. Uh, as I explained, I, I negotiate deals with actors to uh, uh, play roles in films. And What's the significance of the actor in the starring role in the context of a feature film? The, um, the actor in the starring role uh, becomes the face of the film the product, the series, that actor uh, is synonymous uh, th with the product. And again, in hiring that actor or actress, you um, uh, want a reputation that supports uh, uh, the value that you've spent on creating the product. Uh, uh, You might say that Pirates of the Caribbean is Johnny Depp and vice versa. That's the importance of hiring a star. What aspects of an actor's reputation might impact their ability to get hired by brands or studios? Well, again, on the other side of the coin, uh, you, um, you wouldn't want to hire an actor who uh, has 
negativity uh, following them. You wouldn't want to pay to actually bring your brand down, your movie. And uh, so that's very important, and especially in the, the, the last five years uh, uh, with the Me Too movement, uh, you wouldn't want uh, negativity uh, hiring an actor who, quote unquote, had been canceled. Are there, um, is there anything in particular that might prevent an actor from getting hired by a brand or a studio? Well, I mean, it, we're talking about illegal activity, uh, a criminal record, but right now, uh, the, the pinnacle of uh, negativity uh, in Hollywood is uh, being accused of d domestic abuse, sexual uh, abuse, violence, and what we've seen is almost immediately terminations and cancellations to for, for the investors, to the people who create that product, to, to move away from that negativity. I think you mentioned the Me Too movement. Um, what's your understanding of what the Me Too movement is? My understanding of the, of the Me Too movement is that uh, finally uh, society is listening to the uh, uh, victim, giving the, the victim of uh, domestic abuse, sexual abuse, the benefit of the doubt. And there has been a shift in our society from not doing that to now uh, the victim gets the benefit of the doubt until there's too much doubt. And to me, that's the Me Too movement. One person can come forward and accuse uh, Harvey Weinstein, and another person can come forward, and another, and another. That's the Me Too part of it. But they get the benefit of the doubt, whereas in the past, uh, uh, the, the victim didn't have that uh, benefit. What impact has the Me Too movement had on how Hollywood conducts business? It, um, in my many decades in the business, Hollywood has, has changed and morphed, but never as quickly uh, as to respond to uh, the Me Too movement that started in 2017. Uh, when I started in the business, uh, every contract for an actor or someone involved in the movie had a morals clause that you did certain things and you could be fired for it. Uh, they wanted to protect their brand. In the, before the Me Too movement, that morals clause was fading out. Uh, people with leverage, people said, wait a second, you just can't get rid of us because you think this or that. With the Me Too movement, Harvey Weinstein, um, Bill Cosby, if you will, the morals clause has come back and it is a demanded feature in every uh, entertainment uh, uh, employment agreement because the studios want that verbiage. They want those rights so that they can act quickly and decisively when there is a, a, a claim. Mr. Marks, do you have any experience working on a project um, where an actor was accused of domestic abuse or sexual violence? Yes. What was that experience? I did um, some of the uh, production uh, legal work on a film called uh, uh, All the Money in the World. Uh, it was about the life of the Gettys, J. Paul Getty. And J. Paul Getty was played by uh, uh, Kevin Spacey. Uh, he acted in the part. He finished his role. He was paid. And then these Me Too accusations came out. And immediately, my client, in conjunction with Sony, they made a decision to take him out of the movie. Uh, and we, uh, Christopher Plummer was hired. They reshot all his scenes and seamlessly cut them in uh, to the movie. And if you see the, all the money in the world, you won't know that Kevin Spacey was ever in it. So I had that personal experience, and then coincidentally, when that happened, 
Uh, I was also doing work for MRC, which produces House of Cards, uh, and a very successful series, and, and he was the star of it, and he was immediately cut out, and everything was redone to, to get rid of the, 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 the notion that Hollywood would support an abuser after the, the Me Too movement. Um, and then, uh, I, because I was in the mix of all of it, I also know that Kevin Spacey had completed a, another movie for uh, Netflix, um, and unlike uh, All the Money in the World, they couldn't reshoot it, and it sits on the shelf, a movie about Gore Vidal uh, that was finished but has never seen the light of day. What's your understanding of why these companies wanted Kevin Spacey removed from those projects? Can you repeat the question? What's your understanding of why these companies wanted Kevin Spacey removed from those projects? These companies, as I've said, they want they wanted Kevin Spacey removed because they didn't want the negativity. They uh, they want anyone removed so that they can get a return on their investment in our society, so that they are not seen as being in the old generation where uh, women were not given the benefit of the doubt, where a, a, a victims were not given the benefit of the doubt. And uh, there, a switch has been turned, uh, in, in certainly by 2017. Are there certain types of companies that are particularly sensitive to these kinds of allegations made by women in light of the Me Too movement? Well, I would say uh, the bigger the company, the bigger the budgets, they're all sensitive. Uh, but at the pinnacle of sensitivity are the family-friendly companies like Disney. Uh, they're particularly sensitive, uh, uh, not in a general way, but in a very specific way. Mr. Marks, are you familiar with the op-ed Ms. Heard published in the Washington Post on December 18th, 2018? Yes. What's your understanding of how that op-ed was received in Hollywood? My understanding of how that op-ed was received in Hollywood. Oh, is it sorry, sir. Yes. Is this his personal understanding, his expert understanding? I, it seems like if it's his personal understanding, it's not relevant. I'm asking Mr. Marks based on his nearly 50 years in the entertainment I'll industry. I'll the objection. Thank you, Honor. As I've said before, I am a member of the Hollywood community. That op-ed, uh, for the first time, is in uh, a mainstream publication called the Washington Post. This is a flagship uh, journal, if you will, of American news. We're not talking about a trade paper. We're not talking about a rag. We're talking about the Washington Post. And it it is geared to Hollywood. It says, two years ago, when I was getting my uh, divorce, Amber Heard is saying, uh, I, I was the abuser and you didn't, Hollywood, you, you stood up for my uh, uh, abuser, not for Objection, me, Your the victim. Objection, he's, yeah, now he's mischaracterizing the facts. Yeah. I think he's, he's expressing his understanding of how it was perceived. I'll overrule objection, go ahead. Thank you. What I'm saying is Hollywood got the, uh, the, the subject matter of the, loud, of the of the op-ed loud and clear. Amber Heard was calling out Hollywood for supporting, uh, uh, since, since 2016, supporting her abuser, and uh, uh, she felt the wrath of Hollywood. She was calling them out to do something. In the Washington Post and um, on the eve of her biggest uh, film, a big film for Hollywood. The publicity machine was in high gear. There was uh, lots of publicity and uh, uh, news out there. This was the height of, of her fame, and she used it at that moment to call Hollywood out. They, uh, in my opinion, as a member of Hollywood, they heard uh, that plea loud and clear, uh, and. Um, uh, it also got her publicity for her movie. Uh, you know, uh, I don't think that that, uh, 
in my perception, the people in Hollywood didn't see that as a coincidence, that date. Uh, and um, so, yeah, in, in Hollywood, I think um, uh, the, the message was received that she was sending. Mr. Marks, do you have an understanding of Mr. Depp's reputation in Hollywood with respect to whether or not he's on time to his film sets? 